This will be a day long remembered. Now I am the master. Welcome to another episode of Legends and Theories, and welcome to my review of Young Justice Phantoms, episode 7. And first I want to apologize completely for me for getting to upload last week. I had the video finished, and I forgot to upload it to the channel. And yeah, I realized that when I was about to go make this, I was just checking because I was like, I wasn't sure it was the right one, so I just checked my video. I was like, wait, I didn't upload last week. It took me a few minutes to figure that out. I was looking through, I was like, there's a missing video on here. And I eventually, I eventually realized that I forgot to upload. So I'm sorry about that. And to continue, I, yeah, I'm gonna go into this. So you had. Well, one more justice review than you thought you would get this week. So, let's begin. And yeah, this was a rather interesting episode. This one dealt with, well, many things, including the, what's called the Miss Martian, dealing with Superboy's death, and how tragic that was. And it continued to show her, at first, blaming her brother, but then after she realized that he was innocent, she then, well, at least of that, but also still guilty of genocide, well, attempted genocide, and he escaped, she goes and tries to um, deal with this, and throughout the episode, although it is a, it's technically like a C plot, since the main is, well, the Artemis story and the secondary is the really awesome Joker story, which I'll go into in a little bit, I will, well, discuss that in a little bit, but going here, I think that Young Justice, you know, that was pretty interesting to see, like, how much this hurt her. And I feel, well, you know, I feel really bad for her and everything that she's gone through. And how much this has really hurt her since she really isn't acting in character and was both being very cold and extremely destructive when she went and well destroyed all those white Martians pretty easily. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. I honestly can't believe that how dark she's kind of going right now, but she did lose all of her life, and yeah, that's pretty, pretty dark for her. And continuing, I think that, yeah, it was pretty interesting to see, and I'm pretty excited to see how her storyline continues. But then let's go to the B plot, which is a flashback to, well, how the Joker basically reacted to learning that he was a pawn. And that went very poorly. I was always, well, it would be kind of a plot hole if they didn't address this. And for the little weird and inconsistent, because although I do like that Injustice League episode, the Joker, well, is a villain that you don't mess with. And I knew there was a flaw in the plan. And I was glad once they addressed it. In this episode and at first I was thinking that especially with the mention of Jason in this episode this would be involved with the death of Jason Todd but it turns out that it was actually adapting the killing joke 
and leading to how well Oh, what's her name? Uh, Cassandra comes under can, I believe. Is spoiler? No spoiler. Uh, orphan became uh well part of the Bat family, and she was sent to kill Joker, who was trying to get revenge because well he's the Joker, and the light used him. So. With that, I think that that part was done very well, since that's how I thought Joker would react to these events once he was, well, once he learned that he was being used. Yeah, but the way that Barbara is paralyzed this time, I think is, well, not as dark as the original version. But still works. I still like the, well, extremely dark version of this and the killing joke where Joker does this mess with her father. But I think that this still works and was done well enough. Although I do like killing the joke a little more. Although that is a classic Batman story. Another thing I want to do mention is well we continue I think that we had some pretty good stuff with the main story too we learned that uh, Vandal Savage's daughter is actually the mole and although they are still questioning Onyx I think that she's good because I'm pretty sure in the comics that she is an anti-hero maybe a hero i'm not 100 percent sure on that i just remember that she was in the comics version of under the red hood and she was in there as an ally of batman but yeah i think that that storyline was done well and i think it was a really good episode overall i think it's probably my favorite one since well it had Joker in it, and it was done really well. And this is the first time Joker has been seen in an episode since season one. Yeah, it's pretty crazy that we've only seen Joker twice. Although I'm guessing we may see him a third time this season when we get the death of Jason and Todd recounted, if it does happen. But I'm guessing if that happens, it'll mean the storyline based on Nightwing and possibly well, that girl or Oracle now and that would be pretty interesting to see I definitely think it'd be cool and I wonder what you think but continuing with the episode I think that we definitely have been getting better and better I really like this with the rest of the plot lines. Talk about the main one. Yeah, I think that it was a good storyline the, for the main story. Definitely interesting and exciting. I'm definitely interested in seeing where this goes the next week. And yeah, I'm also interested why they are doing a bunch of different literature being read by Artemis and these. I'm excited to see how this continues. And yeah, I wonder what you think of it. Did you like the new episodes of Young Justice? Did you not like it? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you all next episode of Legends and Theories. Thank you for watching this episode of Legends and Theories. Please subscribe, like the video, share the video, leave a comment, check out the video on screen, and may the force be with you.